Oh man, today's the day where I find out once and for all how I stack up against all of the fastest puzzlers in the world. Done. Oh wow, that was so much more difficult than I expected. So if you haven't seen them yet, both of my videos about the recent World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships are up now. This event was held in Spain, which is a very long way away from Los Angeles, so I couldn't be there. But I have acquired all four puzzles from the three qualifying rounds and the individual final. So. I'm gonna do these as fast as I can and just see how I would have placed. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in the same order as the competition. So the first puzzle I'm gonna do is this London illustration. The top puzzlers were Angel, Soraya, and the two Katarinas. The top time was just over 32 minutes. And if I wanna make it into the top 10, I'll have to do it in under 47 minutes. Is that too ambitious of a goal? I like, I really don't know how this is gonna go. So let's just get everything set up and then I'll get started. <laughs> I'm so nervous. All right, so I've got my puzzle in the blue Ravensburger bag, just like they did at the competition. Um, it's still shrink wrapped, so just like at the competition, I'm gonna have to open the whole thing and, you know, dump out all the pieces. But there are a couple differences between what I'm doing here and the actual competition, the biggest one being I already know what the puzzle looks like. It's not a surprise to me, but I promise I really have tried to not think too hard about what my own personal strategy is gonna be. Um, another difference is that I don't have lots of stuff going on all around me and Spanish commentary and drones flying overhead, but I do have one, two, three cameras set up and I'm gonna have to keep an eye on all three of them all on my own. So I feel like that kind of evens out, you know? <laughs> so I'm so excited to get started. But first, I wanna tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Birch Living. So as you guys have seen in all of my videos, I spend so long leaning over my table, working on a puzzle, sometimes with the giant puzzles up to like eight hours a day. And since it has been a very long time since I was a teenager, <laughs> I'm definitely feeling it in my body and in my back. And you know that thing that people say where you shouldn't cheap out on the things that separate you from the ground. So that's your shoes, your car tires, and your mattress. So let me tell you about the Birch Living mattress because I have been sleeping so well since I got it. This is a premium mattress in a box company. Oh, it's expanding, it's expanding. Oh my God. So I got my friends to come over and help me unbox it, and it was so easy to set up. The mattresses are made with organic and natural materials right here in America, and the organic materials help keep you cool at night. And living here in the very hot Los Angeles, I definitely appreciate that. And I love that the raw materials are produced and harvested sustainably, so that's one less thing to stress over when you're trying to fall asleep. So I went all out. I got the Birch Lux mattress, which is a premium upgrade to their original mattress. And I also got their mattress topper. I've had it for a couple weeks now and I've been loving it. The mattress I had before this was the first one I bought after college. It was really cheap. I'd been sleeping on it for like a decade now and it was definitely time for an upgrade. This feels 
so luxurious every single night when I go to bed. So you can go to birchliving.com slash Karen Puzzles and you can get $400 off plus two free pillows. And then you can go take that $400 that you saved and go buy a whole bunch of puzzles. This sounds like a great plan. <laughs> Oh my God, okay, for real this time, for real, this is it. Now it is going to get very warm in here. So I did decide that I am going to leave the air conditioning running and the fan running, and I only have two of my four lights on. And that's because I think this is the one time that I just need to prioritize my comfort and my solve time over the video aesthetics and the sound quality. So, okay, oh my God, it's already getting warm in here. I've had the AC off for like two seconds. <laughs> turning that on, turning on the fan. I have all three cameras going. Um, at about 30 minutes, I will have to pause and I'll pause the time and then just reset all of the cameras. And, ah, okay, I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 for real this time, for really, really real. And start, oh my God, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. Ah, I can't even get the box open. There we go. So I started by turning over all the pieces and also sorting out all of the red pieces at the same time. You'll see in a lot of these puzzles that I'll just separate out a section and then build the edge of just that small section. Then I can finish off the inside pieces and doing the edge first just gives me something to work off of. And when you're going for speed, I think it is definitely easier to separate out a distinct color like this bright red instead of immediately trying to pull all of the edge pieces, which can be harder to spot. After the red, I moved on to this purple flower. I also, at this point, I did start grabbing all of the edge pieces that I could spot, not necessarily to put them all together all at once, but just so that they would all be in one place. So now I feel kind of bad for judging some of the competitors for not necessarily having all of their sections organized into the correct spot on the puzzle, because you can see that mine were like all over the place. So around the 18 minute mark, I did decide to finish the edge so that I would know how much space there was between each of these sections. And yikes, I was not quite as far ahead as I thought. But let's see how I'm doing compared to all of the actual competitors. So at 22 minutes, Katerina and I are actually pretty close together. Same with the other Katerina from Sweden. Yeah, I'm really not that far behind. And I really loved this puzzle. Since there are so many colors and textures, I really felt like I was putting in piece after piece after piece really quickly, and it was so satisfying. So just like most of the competitors, like Soraya here at a half hour, 
Um, I worked my way in from the edges into the middle, though she was definitely way further ahead at this point. You can see that she has that entire blue section done. And then at 32 minutes, this is where Angel finishes his entire puzzle, and I still have like a third of my puzzle still to go. And what is left is definitely the hardest section. A lot of the blues looked pretty similar. A lot of the building looked pretty similar. I definitely felt like I was constantly making progress and keeping a pretty good pace, but I guess just not as fast as all of the top puzzlers in the entire world. But oh man, this is where it gets intense. Time to battle it out for a top 10 spot as those seconds just keep ticking by. Okay, if I was at the event, this is when everyone would be finishing all around me and suddenly I'm like struggling. minutes and 56 seconds. That literally felt like 10 minutes past. All right, so I have all the finishing times printed out here. If I was more confident in my abilities, I could have just printed the first page, but I did all of them because I truly did not know where on the list I was gonna fall. So at 47.56, oh my gosh, I would have been 11th place. I would have been right here in between Laura and Christina, both from Spain. I think that's pretty solid. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that. Not quite top 10, but this was my first try, so I definitely think I learned a lot already just doing one. So maybe in one of the next ones, maybe I can crack top 10. Also, Tammy was in this round and she did it in 46 minutes. So basically an entire two minutes faster than me. All right, so after each puzzle, I want to share a couple things that I learned. First, I realized I needed to prop the box up so I could look at it straight on because looking at it laid down on the table at an angle was just not very efficient. There were a bunch of pieces that I looked at and then just had to move on because from this angle, I couldn't really see where they went on the puzzle. Also at the end of the puzzle, I think I need to avoid putting so many pieces within the borders of the puzzle because you can see that it was getting pretty crowded. But I did use Tammy's strategy that she had shared with me where you just kind of put pieces near where they need to go. And then you can go back and just put in a bunch of pieces all in a row. But I'm realizing just how hard speed puzzling really is. You know, I do puzzles for hours on end all the time, but I'm not actively trying to do them as fast as possible. So I'll look up, you know, take a little bit of a break, get up, walk around. But in this case, when I was like super focused on just the puzzle and just trying to be fast, um, around the half hour mark, I started getting that urge of like, all right, it'd be great to take a break right now, but I just have to keep going. So I think that's definitely something I need to work on before the team's competition in San Diego, because that is going to be hours and hours on end of speed puzzling with no breaks. Oh man, okay, so time for puzzle number two. I already have it all set up in the bag, ready to go. So this is the first time that I'm competing against Alejandro's time. If you remember, he was miles ahead of everyone else in this qualifying round. 
He finished in 32 minutes, and then the next person was at 40 minutes. So if I wanna make the top 10, I'll have to be faster than 55.23. All right, I guess there's nothing more to it. All right, let's do this. Three, Dos, two, one. Adelante. You can start. Good luck to you all. Okay, so in this one, I did something kind of interesting with the sorting. I ended up basically sorting the pieces into warm colors versus cool colors. The orange and yellow pieces were so similar that I basically just grouped them all together instead of trying to sort all of them up front. And then I figured I would worry about the greens and the blues later. That is a future Karen's problem. So once again, you can see that I'm building out the edge of just the red section and then quickly filling it in. Okay, so um, who remembers when I said this? So this is actually a really easy puzzle because you can really easily sort out the colors. So instead of doing one 500 piece puzzle, you're basically doing six 83 piece puzzles. Well, <laughs> it turns out each 83 piece section is still pretty hard. Any continuous texture like these flowers it's just really difficult to put together. Oh man, halfway to when Alejandro would have been done and I'm literally like not even close. Oh my God, this is gonna be so rough, I can already tell. So I found that the water was the easiest part because the size of the ripples changes from the bottom to the top. And you can see that Alejandro noticed that too, because he did the entire bottom half of the puzzle first, which probably would have been a better strategy. Oh my God, at 23 minutes, just look at how much further ahead he is than me. I don't know how he does it. And then I can't believe I did this. So at 25 minutes, I paused to reset all of the cameras. And then when I sat back down, I forgot to turn the timer back on. I realized like a minute later, but then I accidentally hit reset instead of start. So instead of having an incorrect time on the table, I decided to just move my phone away entirely. So I'm gonna have to check the footage later to get my final time. And so this means that for the second half of the puzzle, I have no idea how long it's taking me. Oh my God, do I even want to see this? Here is Alejandro finishing, and here is me at the exact same time. I'm just gonna go quit puzzles forever now. And, and I'm done. Okay, I don't have a timer to turn off, so I'm gonna have to grab my computer and check the footage to know what my final time was. <laughs> Ooh. 
one eternity later. All right, I've got everything all ready. So these are the three different clips that I filmed. I already trimmed them down to exactly when I started and stopped working. So I just have to move this one into place. And there it is, my final time, 54 minutes and six seconds. And then if we take a look at everyone else's final times, let's see. Okay, 54.06, that would put me right here. Oh my God, 10th place, oh my God. Did I really make the top 10? I would have made the top 10. I can't believe I did it. So here is the chart of the top 15 with me inserted in. If I had only been 11 seconds faster, I could have been in ninth place. So after doing both puzzles, I can definitively say that this puzzle was definitely more difficult than the London puzzle. Even though you have these lines separating the sections, the textures are so busy that sometimes it's hard to spot some of those lines. But this was my second puzzle of the day, so my whole body just felt a lot slower. I am a morning person. I usually do my best work first thing in the morning. So doing this one later in the day, it was after I had had a big lunch. Um, my mind was a bit tired from the first puzzle. My back was starting to get sore. So here's my checklist for next time. Um, have a healthier lunch, do some jumping jacks in order to wake up a little more, and start a more regular exercise routine to really strengthen my back muscles. I did not realize going into it, but speed puzzling is such a like physical and mental sport. This is what the training is gonna be looking like. All right, it is a brand new day, time for puzzle number three. Now, this is the round where I'm going to be going up against Kristen. She did this puzzle in 37 minutes, and if I wanna make the top 10, I basically have to do it in about 54 minutes or less. Now, I know that everyone wants me to do a puzzle Kristen style. So far, I definitely feel like I've had way more like fast moving Alejandro energy than calm Kristen energy. <laughs> but I feel like once you're just in the moment, you know, it's hard to really think about strategy. You're kind of just working entirely on instinct. So maybe this time I'll try to like think about it and be a little more purposeful with each piece that I try to put in. But I really don't think I can do the entire thing one-handed. Maybe I will try to spend a little more time sorting though before I actually start putting things together. That was a strategy that she used that seemed to work really well. So, all right, let's, let's give it a try. And here we go, start. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Ah! I purposefully kept my nails long for this video just so I could get the plastic off easier. So I know that I said I might try to do some more sorting up front. Uh, spoiler alert, I didn't do that. Instead, I just sorted out the edge pieces while turning everything over. And then once it was all turned over, I pulled out all of the bright red pieces. After the red book covers, I did the telephone pretty easily. And then I'm about to spend 
so long on these flowers in the corner. So one thing I realized I need to get better at is looking at the box more. When I do puzzles just for fun, I find it more fun to only look at the box a little bit and to mostly use the pieces to figure out which sections go where. But when you're doing puzzles for speed, it makes way more sense to keep looking at the box and know that, oh, right here, I need a white flower. Right here, I need a pink flower. Right here is where this particular flower goes. But I'm just so much in the habit of not looking at the box that that is something that I really need to work on. Okay, finally finished those flowers. That was a lot. So after just this much, we're already at 33 minutes and look where I am compared to Kristen. This is actually embarrassing. Okay, finally, after finishing the flowers, I got most of the edge finished, uh, just in time for Kristen to finish her entire puzzle. So this bottom edge, I realized it's actually easier to put it in once the inside pieces are in place because the edge pieces all look so similar to each other. Kristen had the exact same strategy for this part, although she got there 15 minutes before I did. So at this point, I finally had to move on to the frames and I really struggled here. Again, I should have looked at the box more because I tried to do it by the different textures of the green backgrounds, whereas it probably would have been faster to do it based on the textures of the frames themselves. Like I didn't realize until a while into it that for example, this frame in the top right looks completely different to all of the other frames. So I could have done that part much sooner if I had looked more closely at the box when I was starting to slow down. So I was really disappointed to pass a full hour, but luckily, even though all of the pieces that are left are really dark, there aren't too many of them. And Ravensburger piece shapes are unique enough that at this point I managed to finish it off without any more trouble. Done. Oh, wow, that was so much more difficult than I expected. Wow, okay, that was intense. <laughs> Okay, so my final time, one hour, two minutes and 30 seconds. Why do my times just keep getting longer and longer with each puzzle I do? I started out so strong and now I'm at over an hour for a 500 piece puzzle. So let's go all the way down this list and see where I'm gonna place. I can just entirely skip the top 10 this time. So what was it? An hour, two, an hour, two. So that would put me right here between these two. So that would be 20th place. I fell all the way down from 10th place in the previous round to 20th place this time. And look, I'm right behind Kristen's mom. It took me like, 30 seconds longer than her. <laughs> okay, so this puzzle was kind of a disaster, but I'm using it as a learning opportunity. So I realized that what happened is I just kept getting flustered. When the puzzle isn't quite as immediately easy as the previous two puzzles, I would just get a little like overwhelmed and my eyes would just dart around instead of just focusing in on one section. So I think I need to channel Kristen's calmness 
and just look up for a sec, take some deep breaths and refocus whenever I feel that happening. Because I kept doing this thing where I would just sort of randomly pick up a piece and try it where it definitely didn't belong. And that's just wasting time. It's better to pause for a second and then look for a piece that you're actually sure of because then you're actually making real progress. Okay, I definitely need to take a really long, relaxing break before I take on the final puzzle where I'm going up against Alejandro, Kristen, Katerina, like literally everyone all at once. Oh man, oh man, I'm so nervous. <laughs> This wasn't the best showing going into the final showdown. Okay, time to redeem myself after that last disaster of a puzzle. Time to take everything that I have learned and see how I do on the individual final puzzle. I feel like for this one, since I'm competing against every single top puzzler all at once, getting top 10 would be very uh, ambitious. But in order to do that, I would have to do it in 47 minutes or faster. If I wanna get top 20, um, I would have to beat Tammy and she did it in 50 minutes and 37 seconds. So I think that's my goal. I just wanna beat Tammy's time. Let's see if I can do it. And for the last time, start. Ah! Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I couldn't even get it out of the bag. Okay, we will get back to the dramatic music at the very end. For now, obviously that red door is so bright that I had to pull all of those pieces first. And then I also pulled out all of the pink and purple pieces, which were so similar that I didn't bother fully separating them up front. I just made one big pile of pink. So the door went together super fast. And I realized that in all four of these puzzles, I always started with the red section. So after that, this was a surprise, even to me. Even though it's a pretty boring part of the puzzle, the road has a distinct texture. So I thought that I could knock out that corner pretty quickly. So at 11 minutes, I'm working on the pink flower box and I'm actually not too far behind Alejandro quite yet. And look at Teresa. You can see that she also started with the door and the road, just like me. But then jumping ahead to 13 minutes, so only two minutes after the last clip, Alejandro already has the edge finished, the purple house finished. You'll see that I actually don't finish the edge until pretty far along in this puzzle and I really think I should have done it sooner. But anyway, you can see that I do the purple house next and then the blue house. I did this puzzle in such a random order. Now, at this point, you can see how I stop the time again to reset the cameras, and then I sit down and I forget to turn it back on. So once again, we'll have to check the footage at the end of the puzzle, and I will have no idea in the moment 
how I'm doing against all of the other competitors. Speaking of the other competitors, here are a couple shots of my progress synced up with everyone else. And you can see just how far behind I'm getting. And then at 34 minutes, of course, Alejandro finishes his entire puzzle. You know what? Good for Alejandro. No, I actually am like even more impressed to them before after trying this one for myself. So at this point, I did have a good strategy going with the railings because I realized you could tell where the pieces go on the puzzle based on how far apart the stripes are. So even though the bottom half of this puzzle is pretty boring, there's enough different stuff going on that it's pretty easy to just finish off. Of course, as I'm finally making real progress, Kristen also finishes her entire puzzle. And then so does Teresa. But I actually felt really good about this puzzle. I felt like I was going really fast and constantly making progress. I didn't get flustered and I really had fun doing it, which not to be cheesy, but I think that is the most important thing. So, okay, you can see that after separating them out first, the pink pieces were actually the last section that I did. So I'm going to put the dramatic music back on, but I guess it's not quite as effective without the timer actually on screen. Uh, my bad, sorry about that. Oh my god well that actually felt so good i feel like i did that really fast i mean i'm gonna have to go check the footage to see what my actual time was but that felt like i was in the zone the entire time okay i've got the clips trimmed down to when i actually started and stopped working on the puzzle it definitely took me under an hour let's just move these two clips together and there's my final time, 55 minutes and 15 seconds. I don't remember where that puts me on the list. Let me look. <laughs> okay, 55, 15. Oh, oh, we're going really far down. <laughs> okay, there, there it is. No, no, wait, hang on, there it is. So that means, oh, I would have been in 34th place. I guess that kind of makes sense if I was around like 10th place for at least two of the three puzzles, then you add up all of those top puzzlers above me and that puts me down into the 30s. Tammy's time was 50 and a half, so she was a full five minutes faster than me. And then of course, Alejandro is just totally out there on his own. <laughs> but you know what, 34th in the entire world, I don't think that's all that bad, but I do have to practice before the competition in San Diego. So if you don't know what's going on in San Diego, the National Jigsaw Puzzle Championships are happening there in October and I will be competing. Registration is open now if you wanna come out and compete against me. I'm gonna put all of the info right down below. But now that I've completed all four puzzles, you know there's gonna be data. So let's take a look at a couple charts. Okay, so here is a simple bar chart of all four of my finishing times. 
including the dog puzzle that just inched right past an hour. That is so frustrating to see. Next, I thought it would be interesting to compare my times with the top finishers of each round. And then I calculated the difference in our times. So no real surprise there. The biggest difference was again, the dog puzzle, which took me over 25 minutes longer than it took Kristen. And then I couldn't really think of any more charts to make, but I thought it would be interesting to put the synced up time lapses all on screen together so that you can see the progress of each puzzle compared to the rest. Okay, so I guess I kind of had it in my head that since I do so many easy puzzles just for fun and so many difficult puzzles here on the channel, that just through osmosis, I would naturally be a great speed puzzler. And I don't think I did badly. I think I did perfectly fine, but I'm definitely realizing that speed puzzling is an entire skill set all on its own. I really didn't think about how much of a marathon this is for your brain. So I think that as I continue training for San Diego, I need to practice doing more puzzles straight through with no breaks as fast as I can. I also think I need to practice sitting at an actual table instead of sitting on the couch or in bed with a piece of foam board like I usually do. I also need to practice looking at the box more to know exactly where each section is gonna go. And I need to practice staying calm and taking deep breaths and not getting flustered. And then maybe, maybe someday in my life, maybe I can finally beat Tammy at a jigsaw puzzle. So as I mentioned at the beginning, the first three puzzles are currently available on Amazon if you wanna try them out for yourself. I'll have the links right down below. I would love to know in the comments what your final times were if you tried these exact same puzzles. Or feel free to brainstorm some other strategies of how you can think I can get even faster at speed puzzling. And then over on Patreon this week, I put up a bonus video of my entire 55 minute solve of this final puzzle synced up with the original live stream. And I recorded a full commentary track where I'm talking more about the puzzle and also going on tangents and answering all of my patrons' questions. I basically recorded like a podcast episode. So if you want to watch that, that is up on Patreon right now. So thank you again to Birch Living for sponsoring this video and providing me with my fancy new mattress. Your code word for the comments will be strategy. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next one.